For the University of Windsor, this new engineering building is going to become a landmark building on our campus, in our city, in our region. Working with the uh, university was great. I'm glad to see that we as a company making uh, what they once thought was a dream a reality. And when you see the faces on those that have worked on this project for years and years, and they're actually seeing it come to reality, to see their expressions and their comments uh, make me very proud to be a Windsorite. The great experience that we've had in working with PCR is that for them, this is an opportunity to also create a signature building in the Windsor-Essex region. And I know that we're going to be really happy with it when it's done. The building is designed by b &H Architects and they've done a great job. It's been designed in a way that you can see a lot of the structural elements in the building. 95% of our sub-trades were all Windsor-based subcontractors. So they all had the pride to be there to get it done on time uh, and on schedule because we were, I think, a homegrown team. It's approximately 306,000 square feet in total. Various building materials brings in various trades to having to work closely together for the structure. You got timber working with a structural steel guy to make sure that their uh, other components interact together. It's made it very challenging, but it's also made it a beautiful and interesting building to look at from the inside. Even for ourselves, even though we're in the construction industry, it was interesting to see how all these different bridgeways could be built uh, using different materials and different uh, design. We self-perform a lot of work. So we self-perform our own site work, self-perform our own concrete work, we self-perform our own finishing, and we also self-perform our own precast. Uh, a lot of those items are the things that have to get done right off the starting gate. You're setting the pace for the job. So basically, with us controlling those three divisions, it helped us out tremendously to get the project started off on the right foot. The project is actually pretty unique because there's a lot of laboratories throughout the project, which involves a lot of mechanical systems, a lot of uh, testing equipment, uh, ventilation equipment, and it's very tight tolerances with respect to some of the mechanical and electrical equipment. On the northwest side, it's all cast in place construction. So it's all arch framing, it's all cast in place columns, drop beams, decks, walls. And you'll actually see there along L line wall where that was supposed to be a cast in place wall. And we actually converted all of L line wall to complete precast to uh, expedite construction and actually to give the owner a better product at the end of the day too because that was going to be an exposed wall both on the inside and on the outside and with a nice clean precast wall uh, it was going to be more um, architecturally pleasing to look at. It's masonry, it's precast, it's cast in place, it's structural steel so it was a very complicated building to construct because it's basically becoming a, a, a classroom. It's a, it's a living classroom for different techniques of construction that the profs and the engineers can use to demonstrate the different styles of construction. It's a huge space when you walk into the atrium. There's also a lot of exposed structure in there which makes the building interesting, especially from an engineering standpoint. Very large timbers uh, that helped uh, enclose the building on the third floor gave the building really its final shape. That was uh, probably another highlight. That's just something that you don't typically see in buildings and I think uh, the architects and engineers uh, accomplished what they had to accomplish to provide an engineering structure to an engineering faculty. I think of three words when I talk about the University of Windsor. I think about students, I think about spaces, and I think about stories. And if we're doing the best thing for students then we're achieving our strategic mission. We can't do that unless we've got spaces where their minds can feel comfortable, where they've got places to study, they've got places to interact, and classrooms that, that are state-of-the-art. I think about stories, and that's about what engineering is doing. There's gonna be so many stories coming out of the successes that these students are gonna have when they become alumni and go out. Engineering is about doing things, experiencing things, hands-on things. Often the ideas will come from exploration, discussions with other students. So the building has the capability for students to group together, to discuss, to use the latest technology. Engineering as a profession, it's all application. You don't just sit down and work on theories. So having the ability to interact with equipment, it just enhances the learning experience. We joke around, I guess, with other students saying it's our new shiny toy, the lab facilities and the building itself, and it being a building that is interactive in all ways will just be a phenomenal experience, and we're kind of setting the bar in terms of engineering buildings, I guess, in Ontario. We're just all excited for it. Here you walk in and the student spaces are immediately apparent. This place is for the students, it's for the learning, it's for the faculty and the staff to interact, for everybody to grow. 
And the one thing about the building is it's designed so that a lot of the structural elements and components are exposed. You can see what's going on. You can literally touch and feel it. So those are some of the things that will really add, I think, tangible value to a person's education. The engineering building has a space within it, an industrial area, for community organizations to come and work in, for industries to come and work in, and it's all a part of the vision of, uh, of letting this building really serve the needs of students, serve the needs of our faculty and staff, but also serve the needs of the industry and the region around us. The building will age over time, hopefully gracefully. And so the idea is that as it ages, the students can see how systems change, what maintenance is required, what energy is consumed, how a building can be green and sustainable in this modern context. Because having something surround you and participating in it is so much better than having just a little scale model working on it in a lab. It is a spectacular building. It is an engineering feat in itself just, just to build it. It itself will be inspirational. It's a bit like walking into a fabulous art gallery where just the space itself is sometimes as inspiring as the paintings on the wall. It's not me, it's not my brother, it's not my dad. It's the teams that we've built around us. It's the people of the company that made the company able to do what it's done. See those types of buildings and then see the guys that actually worked on those projects, remember those memories and talk about those projects and how wonderful it was and how what a wonderful experience it was. We are finally bringing to life a vision about creating the best space we possibly can for students, for education, the best space we can for our faculty who are doing research and innovation and engineering, and the best space we can to engage our engineering faculty with industry, with the community around us. And what this building is doing is letting the University of Windsor now get right to the front of the pack in Canada in terms of how we are providing an engineering education opportunity to make this a building the community and industries around us can come into and work within.